At the beginning of June, I hosted the first ever mashup game jam. What started as a hopeful 100 people to join soon boomed in over 450 people joining at the start of the jam, and in the end had 142 games submitted. So before I say anything else, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who participated. You all did amazing. And now the game jam ended and the ratings are up, it's time to delve into the winners of the jam, as well as some notable entries. And since I was personally able to play and rate all of the entries, that means I have a lot of games I want to talk about. Too many, in fact. So the way this video is going to go is as follows. For each category, I will give special mentions to 5 games I think did well in that category, and then showcase the winner's game in a playthrough. I will leave the overall category for last. And so on to the first category, Theme. This category means how well the game managed to adhere to the theme of the jam, which was Size Matters. If you want to have fun smashing creepy head monsters with a hammer, then you'll like Recursion Betty, where your size changes on if you kill an enemy or get hit by an enemy or projectile. And what's even cooler is that the game is endless, with every next room being double the size, or every previous room being half the size. Whilst this does end with some room rendering issues after a certain number, the gameplay remained very fun. With an alternative take on rock, paper, scissors, 5 minutes gives a short but effective primary leap where you have to match your players against different size enemies, where small defeats large, medium defeats small, and large defeats medium. This gameplay is enhanced with the opportunity to buy things before each round, such as dealing damage first or giving a player an extra heart. If you want something a little silly but very fun, try Big Gun Tiny Dungeon a game where the only way to move around a dungeon and defeat enemies is to shoot a massive gun. Whilst the concept is silly having a gun in a medieval setting, the gameplay is great where you propel yourself backwards with recoil from the firing. In a papers please fashion, this tool to ride has you playing the role of a ride operator at a fairground, where you have to only let people in who are tall enough to ride. Though the game is short, it does manage to expand on the simple concept a little in checking the person's age and parent supervision. Digital Dimensions gives a nice take on tower defence, where you grow when you defeat enemies, and after you are big enough you give birth to another tower. Your towers also grow in size the more enemies they kill, which makes them slower to move and so encourages you to instead build your empire of many crystal towers. And the winner for the design category was Astrolite by Jolo Moju. This game did extremely well, not only winning first place in design but also in topic and fun, as well as second place in overall and fifth place in originality. The game has you play as little spaceman who ends up crash landing and must find the pieces of the ship to repair it and continue on their journey. The main gameplay of the game is using a lantern that can grow and shrink objects, so they can be used as platforms or weights. First off, I have to talk about the opening cutscene. Not only does it give good background to what the game is about, but it's also hella cute in the way the little spaceman is animated. I really like how the lantern is moved around and not fixed onto the player. It makes it feel less rigid. The pixel art is cute and manages to avoid falling into either the too messy or too plain look that a lot of Game Jam games tend to have. The sound effects of shrinking and growing objects is absolutely my favourite thing from this game, as long as the design of the player, and the ways in which the mechanic is explored are not too difficult either. Granted, they might be a little easy, but it's a much better thing being too easy than too hard. The music isn't obnoxious and plays into the light-hearted nature of the game. During the jam it only had three levels, which really didn't take long to complete at all. But I am aware that this is a game jam and it is very hard to make levels, so I'm not really going to hold it against them. Though after the jam the creator has made a level 4. But overall, this game definitely deserves its ranking. Great job, Jolo Moju. On to category 2, Originality. This category will hold the games with the most original ideas, whether it's in the innovation of the gameplay idea, setting, or how they took the theme. Shrinking Arena, though a small game, has a unique idea that the room you can move in shrinks every time you move, with red circles that slowly envelop the room. I would love to see this idea in a puzzle setting. If you've ever wanted to take on the role of a gross deadly blob that kills and consumes people to grow, then Consume has you covered. You use two stringy arms to move around a secret lab to consume scientists and soldiers. And while the controls are quite hard to get used to and the layout of the walls are hard to spot, the game idea is not only present, but also quite intriguing. Another take on tower defence is Untitled Space Game, which has you choose different sized planets to build towers on and defend yourself against crab-like enemies. 
Yes, the enemy's movement need a little work, but the different types of towers makes you feel like you're building a planetary base, and it gives a new, unique take on the tower defense genre. Juicy Juice XXL has you use your keyboard to raise and lower buildings to guide an overweight person on a scooter to the end goal. The way the keyboard is used in this game is a fun original idea, and it's kind of fun to send this person launching in the air. Size and shape has you make your own triangles and then scale, move and rotate it to fit into holes. The closer of a fit you get, the more points you get, which encourages you to be more brave and get as close as possible. This idea seems awesome, and I would like to see it handle different shapes like squares in the future. And the winner for the originality category was Ice Lolly Lips by Jester Great and Nani Kazunami. This game was very fun to play, as it had you cut up ice lollies to the size requested by the man and then feed it to him. It definitely is original, at least in a bizarre idea, since I doubt anyone else thought of making a game about slicing a lolly and flying it into a guy's mouth like a rocket. The audio is both great and a little disturbing at first, but it definitely plays into the nature of the game. It was quite hilarious to play, especially in guiding the lolly into the guy's mouth, which could cause his teeth to be knocked out if he weren't very precise, or for him to choke if you send it too far down. The art definitely makes this game great too, and you could tell that the creators were going for a silly and funny game here. The game is very short, seeming as you cut a lolly, feed the lolly, then repeat that until you either get bored, or you complete the game. But I found this loop entertaining enough to play it for some time, so it wasn't that much of a problem for me. That being said, I do think this game could have benefited more from more diverse gameplay, for example different lollies or different people, but as the game is right now, the absence of these things do not necessarily take away from the game. It's an original idea that definitely follows through on the promise of fun. Well done Jester Great and Nani Kizunami. Category 3 is Design, which is all about how well a game is designed in the gameplay, levels and other areas. Being ambitious in the Metroidvania style, The Light of Us gives us a dark gloomy world to explore. Not only are the graphics in this game amazing, and the sound too, but the game also gives you abilities to unlock which switches up the gameplay. Yes, the movement is difficult with the wall jumping, but even so I found myself carrying through because I got very hooked on completing it. Escape Velocity is not the only game to use planetary orbits to direct a rocket, but it makes the idea its own with using sliders to scale planets and with black holes and rocket boosts, offers unique and fun puzzle gameplay. If you've ever wanted to connect with people on more than an emotional level, then Army is One has you connect yourself to other people with different abilities to complete puzzle levels. The puzzles can be a little on the hard side, but once you complete a level you feel very proud of yourself, which is exactly what a puzzle game should do. Tiny Tanks has you build your own killing machine with different components and fight against an enemy always bigger than you, and I had a lot of fun choosing pieces and testing how well they'd do. Cube and Slider has a unique take on the theme where you use a slider to change the level, whether it's extending a block or hiding it, or moving it around. Instead of just doing the same thing over again, this game instead explores different applications of this, resulting in some levels where you'll be like, oh that's cool. The winner of this category was also Astrolite, so instead I'm going to showcase Snowball by Nova Knight 531. This game also did extremely well, scoring 3rd place in design, audio and overall, as well as being 4th in topic. It's a game where you roll around a snowball that gets bigger in size by rolling over snow, and flames make it shrink. You also get the ability to split the snowball in two down the line. This game looks and sounds great, with a very simplistic monochromatic look that is heightened by the post-processing and, something I really like, the snow falling in the background. The snowball is easy to move around at times, and difficult in other times. The levels are easy to tell what to do, though sometimes harder to perform, and the creator adds some sense to the game with some text in every level that adds a layer of story to it. The audio sets the mood too, with the music adding some atmosphere and melancholy to the lines of the story. I would have personally liked a rolling sound effect, but it didn't take away from the game. The menu was also great, with the snowball rolling away, as most main menus tend to be static but this makes the game feel a little more engaging and alive. The ending pleasantly surprised me, as it wasn't something I was expecting, and I got the sad ending, which makes me believe that there are multiple endings to this, which is a great way of persuading the player to replay. Overall, great job Nova Knight 531, you did great with this entry. On to category fun. Adventure of the Lobit may look like a generic platformer, but with the use of size changing giving you higher jumps or heavier weight makes the gameplay a lot more fun. 
A game like this goes to show that smooth controls and simple gameplay really can make a very enjoyable time. Up We Go interprets the theme in both size and matter, having the house become heavier and harder to control over time as it grows, and your aim is to collect balloons as to increase your buoyancy. The art is simple and stylistic, and I had a lot of fun bouncing around as a house floating with all the balloons, just like in Up. That's how the movie went, right? If you've ever wanted to control your own horde of zombies, then check out Human Catchers, where you infect people to grow your numbers and avoid losing too many zombies to bullets. It can be quite hard when you get to a certain point, but the cutesy animations and simple gameplay makes it a lot more fun than expected to move around a group of dead people. Feed the Slime has you control a slime-like creature as they bounce around the levels while avoiding enemies and dangers, and uses collectibles to change their size. The slime animation was very well done that enhanced the gameplay, and I especially liked the ending to this one. Now I've never played the board game Risk, but the Fight for England takes inspiration from it and creates their own game where you distribute your army across England to combat enemy forces. While I did find it pretty hard to win against the AI, I still had a lot of fun trying to spread my army around and taking out the enemy where I could. The winner for this category again was Astrolite, so instead I'm going to showcase Size Invaders by Ben B. Size Invaders is a spacefaring bullet hell game where the health of you and your enemies are represented through size, and you can pick up power-ups throughout the levels. The game is very fun, and throughout all the levels I never found myself having less fun than I was having at the beginning. The game is split into levels, which each introducing new types of enemies, which is a nice way to introduce new dangers. I also like how none of the levels are locked until all previous levels have been unlocked, as it gives players the ability to jump into any level they want to. The graphics of this game aren't necessarily very detailed, but it doesn't need to be, especially when most of the game will have bullets flying everywhere. It also has a simple colour power, and makes it a lot easier to see the bullets, which is ideal for a bullet hell game. On the first play, I did find the game a little difficult in avoiding projectiles when you're on full health, but it should be said that the second time I played it, I was a lot better and I had a great deal of fun playing every level. Good job, Ben B. Now I love me some good graphics, and so while it was very hard to pick only a few to talk about for the graphics category, I'm going to do my best. It's also worth saying the graphics in games mentioned in other categories are also great. Gas vs Dwarves has a cute hand-drawn art style that really enhances the game and sells the idea of flying around as a small dragon growing bigger by eating monsters. This game could have really benefited from music, but then again, you can't be too mad at this little guy. In the same vein of eating things to get bigger, Slimes Ate My City gave you the role of playing as a small slime that consumes burgers, bins, rocks, trees and buildings to grow bigger, to the point where you envelop the whole city. I especially love the look of the slime. If you want a peaceful time playing mini golf, then check out Grolf. Unlike most golf games, this one has you control the size of the ball to destroy walls or travel in paper boats, and the lovely art style really puts you at peace playing this game. Minerest combines foraging elements with survival and base building, where the idea is to grow the size of your base by building furnaces, walls, floor spikes and other things to survive the nights. The visual impact of attacking enemies or cutting down trees really makes this one special. The game has a load of potential, and the person behind it is going to further develop the game, so I'm very much looking forward to what they do. Growthris uses a hyper-casual gameplay to use rubber rings that make things bigger or smaller in an endless gameplay mode. The play is quite simple, but the art style sells the casualness of the game, and this could easily go for mobile platforms. And the winner for this category was A Virtuous Run by Kiwi. This game not only came first in graphics, but also fourth in design and overall. The game puts you in this peaceful world with the task of speedrunning to the end, but on the way you come across people that need your help. Of course, you make the choice on whether you want to help them or not. Going for a 3D game is a lot harder to achieve than a 2D game in my opinion, and the creator really nails a simplistic, tranquil virtual world to explore. The controls can be a little difficult when you have to rely on it for some parkouring, but I can't hold that against them when I know that making 3D first person platforming controls are difficult even without the time limit. I love the simplistic environment with the trees, it really makes the level peaceful, though the music doesn't quite match the peaceful atmosphere with its harsh sounds, but I am aware that the creator was working with Bosco's Keol, and that doesn't allow for soft sounding instruments, so I can't blame them for that. 
parkour can be a little difficult on telling where to go next, but that's only a problem for a small part of the game. The rest of it is pretty clear on where to go. And you're probably wondering where the theme comes into play in this one. Well, throughout the level, you come across people that require your help, like this player who's got their cat stuck in a tree, or someone who needs your help getting the password. In the end, the game judges you on how many people you helped, even though you were being timed. A measurement on the size of your heart. If you don't help anyone, it kicks you out the game. But if you help all of them, then it allows you to just stay in the game and explore. I especially like the different types of endings. Good job, Kiwi. The category that a majority of people tend to either leave for last or not include at all, but I believe is highly important to games, is audio. Yes, a game without audio can still be a great game, but audio improves the immersion and really takes you in. Incendium has a lovely atmospheric soundtrack that really makes you feel like you're making your way through a snowy land trying to keep a flame alive. The platforming can be difficult and a little frustrating at times with the sloped edges, but the atmosphere is great and the audio by itself is one of the best from the jam. If you've ever wanted to feed a fussy grub, then play Feed Me More. Your task is to feed a grub what they request, in both size and the order they are requested. The voice acting is really great. The murmurs really conveys the fact that the grub is all judgmental and grouchy, and if you aren't sold on that, then just listen to the main menu music. One of only a few story-based games in the jam, The Dark Infinitude tells an emotional, metaphorical story of depression through images and, most importantly, sound. Though the game isn't very long, it really takes you on an emotional journey and has an uplifting ending. Elliptical Illusion has you control a circle that continually shrinks in size and has you grow in size with jumps that can be collected as long as you're big enough. The Vaporwave visuals are really sold in this with the great music accompanying your gameplay that keeps you calm and relaxed. Though the audio isn't the only thing good about this entry, I was thoroughly impressed with Supreme Moonball's sound effects. The music and sound effects give a quirky and somewhat classic impression, and I especially like the sound of falling. <laughs> And the winner for this category is the Swally Grail by Professorix, or rather the team of Charles, Rachel, Roos, and Tom. Welcome to my gym! In this game, you have to train your body so you can be able to lift the holy weights, basically a very heavy dumbbell. No, no, you are not worthy. You have all this training equipment to train with, which in themselves are small mini games, like a treadmill where you just mash the Z and X button. You only have a certain amount of time to train before you are summoned to lift the holy weights, so you likely won't get it the first time, but if you continue restarting you'll work out a strategy to train all of you as quickly as possible. The best thing about this game has to be hands down the narration. You get talked to by God as he commands you to lift the holy weights so you can get to heaven, and during your training gives you some lines of encouragement to indicate how much you have left. There are also sound effects for the player, to make them sound like they're actually working out, which to someone not playing the game will give you weird looks for overhearing. Some of the minigames could be more fine-tuned on difficulty, but it didn't hold back much from the overall experience, since the training session isn't very long. I also like how you see the player become more muscly as it goes on, which may mean you have a very weak body with muscly arms just hanging there, or a really buff dude with a large sensor bar to cover you know what. Well done to all who worked on this entry. And now, onto the last and arguably most important category. The overall category holds the games that are the most cohesive and overall impressive game, that excel in more than one area. And let it be clear that though these special mentions are good overall games, that doesn't make the previous special mentions not great overall. There were just so many games to mention that I didn't want to mention one game more than once. So here are the games I personally thought were great throughout. If you want a quick, fun game to play, then try out Stretchy Clown. At first you think it's just an endless runner where you have to avoid things, but then you find the game a whole lot more fun when you find out you can do this. This hilarious look makes the game a whole lot more fun, and the graphics really help in this case. Big Man in a Tiny World nails simple platformer gameplay with the ability to shoot objects to change their size, and really explores this mechanic, such as enlarging mushroom people so you can walk on their heads, enlarging spiders so you can duck under their legs, or enlarging coins so they will fall from the sky and you can jump on them. The little guy is very adorably animated, and the levels are quite clever to figure out. If you've ever wanted to work retail without working retail, then try out SML Size Matters, a game where you have to pick up clothing in small, medium or large to sell to impatient customers 
this game has a lot to offer. The pixel art style looks great, the game is fun and challenging, and the upgrades allow for a more prolonged play session that will make you forget where the time went. A sticky situation has simple but effective art and very unique gameplay. You play as a sticky block that will stick to anything it moves against, like a box or a cannon. Using this ability, you have to solve some very out of a box puzzles that really gets you to think and really gives you the satisfaction of feeling smart when you finish a level. Not the only game about rolling a snowball, Snowling takes it a different direction where you have to guide a snowball to knock over a pin by moving and rotating objects around the scene. I absolutely love this game and really wish it had more levels because at the end of it I found myself wanting to play more. And the winner for this category is Out of Fuel by Canyon Ding. This game is very cohesive and has done very well throughout the categories, coming second in fun, design and topic, as well as third in originality, so it's definitely deserving of first place in overall. In this game you direct a rocket back to Earth using planetary orbits, not dissimilar to Escape Velocity, but what sets this apart is its retro art and sound, and gameplay that has set sizes for the planets instead of sliders. The overall gameplay was intriguing and fun, though I did find myself spending a very long time on the latter levels because there were so many planets and so many sizes to test. I like the use of particle effects to both indicate the range of the planetary orbits and their power as it's a great visualisation of the game's main mechanics. The simple background avoids being plain with some nice colours that also make the planets pop out and more identifiable. I do think that maybe the game was too difficult in some areas, which could have been simply down to the number of planets, but I would recommend simpler levels for a game jam. Though with that being said, it was a whole lot of fun messing with the planets and seeing where the rocket would go. Another thing to mention is the post-processing in that it makes it really sell on the retro feel. Great job, Canyon Ding. All these games are playable on the itch.io game jam page, which I'll be linking in the description below, as well as the links to the winners games too. And if your game didn't get mentioned in this video, then don't feel down. You all did an amazing job making games, which itself is a large feat. And if you're feeling a little disappointed, then don't be. Game jams are for trying something new and always improving yourself. So for those who felt like they could have done better or done it differently, then there's just one thing I have to say. You'll just have to try again at the next game jam. If you've liked this video, then please like and subscribe. This is Mashup Games, signing out.